Welcome to Before the Bid, your connection to some of the world's best livestock sales. Stay tuned as your host, Andy Howe, takes you coast to coast, stopping along the way to talk with producers about their operation, their livestock, and of course, their upcoming sales. Let's get to it. Welcome, livestock friends, to this Before the Bid podcast, and we are getting another season started off here, and we are starting with a family that I basically grew up with, and the guy that I'm talking to on this one, his dad and my dad showed when they, I think they showed all through their 4-H career and and grew up close to each other and been family friends for a long time and family that we talk cattle a lot. Guy that I'm talking to on this one, he and I are right at the same age. So we grew up together and came through this Angus business. And so we're going to be talking about Angus cattle and we're going to go to Gaston, Indiana, and we're going to be talking about the Angus Equinox sale. And on the phone with me here from Pipe Creek Angus, I have Jason Miller. They have a sale, uh, as I said, coming up here on september the 20th it's going to close out here on angus live called the angus equinox and jason welcome to the podcast uh excited about this one and uh, great to talk to you here on this one well thanks andy that's quite an introduction and i appreciate that very much glad to be here today and what's really cool is you know our dads kind of showed there in delaware county indiana and surrounding counties together you and your brother and me and my brother uh, showed in the same era there. Right. And now our kids are showing together. (laughs) Right. You're exactly right. And I think they were lined up at the backdrop in the same showmanship division at the Indiana Angus preview show this year. That was kind of cool to see those kids lined up there together with three three generations of, of Howells and Miller showing together. We have, we've, we've gone, gone way back. Now I don't know that our, that our grandparents, had had much connection did they no my grandparents you know ran the traditional farm for that era with you know 10 milk cows and grain farming and beef cows and swine but they were not in the angus business my my dad kind of got us started there in that when he was in 4-h so okay your your dad my dad they've been ever since they started Jason, again, want to welcome you to your podcast. Why don't you introduce your family up here and, and tell us about them? And you got a handful of young ones there, as you talked about. <laughs> yeah, almost a, almost a full basketball team. <laughs> You're but, right. So we'll start out with mom and dad and uh, my dad, Lee, and my mom, Kathy. Could not be more grateful to get to live the life that uh, my wife and I live. And, and we get to raise our kids this way on the farm, raising Angus cattle and, and corn and soybeans in central Indiana. And it's all because of them. But, uh, you know, my dad is is the heartbeat of our cattle operation and started in 1971 when uh, he purchased a couple Angus heifers for 4-H. And he's been breeding them up ever since. And and we've got uh, to be the benefactors of all of his hard work and efforts and going through the growing pains as he's, you know, built this thing up over the years. And, you know, mom's always there supporting us and doing all the the little things behind the scenes like most show moms do and and now show grandmoms do so right um, then from there you have my wife kelly and i and uh, as the next generation then we've got four children three boys and one girl everybody says well you just kept going until you got a girl but we got a little <laughs> emma as a surprise and uh wouldn't think twice about doing that again it's just been a great experience, and Adam's uh, 19, Ethan's 17, Owen's 12, and Emma's 8, and all four of them are heavily involved with, uh, you know, being participants in this in this cattle business. So it's a family event for sure. Still got 4-H days and uh, years to come, and you've been in it for quite a while already. <laughs> That's right. This was a good year. We only had two kids, and this is one year. We got Adam out last year, and Emma starts next year, so... It was our one-year reprieve with just having two kids in this year. So. <laughs> it's uh, always exciting to have quite a few of them. Now, is is Emma, is she as into the cattle as the boys are? Well, she's learning. You know, she's mm-hmm. been running blowers on these sale babies. And, um, you know, I was kind of proud of her yesterday. She was holding a tail while we were clipping on one. And uh, she got her foot stepped on and never missed a beat. She just kind of pushed that calf off her foot and didn't cry, no squalling, and, um, you know, kind of moved right on. But her real passion is horses. Oh, okay. 
she thinks dad needs to buy her a horse, and I just think it sounds a lot less expensive to lease one until <laughs> it grows out of that phase. So. What, what is it about little girls and horses? Oh, I don't know, but it just sounds like a money pit to me, Andy, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, I fought that as well, and I and I keep fighting it, but uh, man, now uh, those little girls are working on you about those horses, that is for sure. Yeah, and they'll pull on your heartstrings, too, and they know what they're doing with that. <laughs> You're exactly right. You are exactly right. Jason, let me take just a step back. Do you know where those first show cattle came that your dad bought? You know, I know he should could sure tell you right. and, and give you the whole pedigree on them, but um, I, think, I think they were a down-the-road kind of deal. Of course, at that time, you know, there were several Angus herds right. you know, in most counties, but I think... They might have come from the garrisons, but don't hold me okay. to that, okay. which they still farm right down the road from us. They just don't have cattle anymore. So okay. we'll have to give the I don't know answer and get back to you later on that one. Okay. Another, so. Okay. Well, I know, I guess I know where ours, where my dad's first came from. And so I wondered if that was from the same place right there, right there real close. So you also in... Equinox sale. You also have another family that that has come in this year, and and they're going to consign some cattle to this. That's right. So a name that'll be familiar to several breeders, um, not just in the state, but probably in surrounding states. Rutherford Land and Livestock. Um, Dave Rutherford and his family been in the business a long time and well respected. And our two families get along really well. And we were talking about complementary pieces and how we could work together and. They've put an excellent set of bred heifers together for us. And um, kind of one of the cool facts about the Rutherford family, uh, I don't know if you know this, you probably do, Andy, but the first National Junior Angus show was in Indiana, mm -hmm. and Rutherford's won it. Mm -hmm. So um, they bring a lot of history with them, and they've sure put a nice group of cattle together to to complement our offering as well. Right, so, and, and that farm's located right right there in Indianapolis. Yeah, southeast Indianapolis, um, just outside the 465 circle, actually. Yeah. So nice rolling ground there and nice place to raise cattle, which was a little surprising to me the first time I went out there to find that kind of cattle ground right near Indianapolis there. <laughs> right. He says, yeah, you jump off of this and you get on an access road. And I'm thinking, and you guys have cattle here? And man, it's a beautiful place. So they're going to consign cattle as well, and we'll get into those here uh, in in just a little bit. But something that I noticed coming across in the Indiana Angus News and some things uh, here very recently, uh, it was Miller Family Angus, and, and now you guys have kind of changed some things up just a little bit on the name. Yeah, just a little bit. We went to the name of Pipe Creek Angus, and we got to talking about branding and how can we really create a unique brand that's unique for us and have it be palatable at every level in this business. And there's, quite frankly, Andy, a lot of millers in the Angus mm -hmm. business across mm -hmm. the United States. We needed something to differentiate ourselves from all the other millers in the Angus business. And, you know, we're, we're grain farmers as well, and dad is big on ditching, and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. uh, you've seen some ads, you know, for Whitestone that say Whitestone genetics don't cost, they pay. Mm -hmm. And dad says that about ditching. Uh -huh. And uh, we run all of our ditching through most of our farm ground, which is pretty centrally located through Pipe Creek, which is the main drainage tributary that splits through a lot of our farm ground and pasture and mm -hmm. you know there was kind of a family debate and give and take you know how do we brand this thing what do we rename it and how do we market it and that's kind of what we settled on there so that had to come pretty easily i guess wouldn't it <laughs> you would think so <laughs> <laughs> Fa did, did father and son have a disagreement maybe on a little of that? Oh, no. It was all the kids that had all the different oh. ideas that they thought were better, you know. So, Dad and I were pretty agreeable on everything and it was just trying to settle in on that one that we thought fit us and was going to be best moving forward. So, and so, the, so the kids disagreed with, with Dad and Grandpa. I've, I've never heard that happen before. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. So. Very, very seldom does that happen. You guys also have a, a couple other partners that, that are going to help you get this sale pulled off and uh, Angus Live and uh, some of those people that, that help you with this. And if you would just kind of introduce those a bit. 
some businesses have vendors and they view those relationships as, as vendor and customer and, and we don't really view those those relationships that way um, we have what we call key partners and and there's three of them that i want to highlight here and first and foremost lindsay hanowich used to be lindsay swick before she married brad up there in northwestern indiana she takes all our pictures and videos and she has i think this is the 12th year that she's had to put up with us on picture day uh, <laughs> but when she moved up here from texas i'm not sure if we were the very first but we were one of the first customers of hers and now she's the official photographer for the indiana state fair and has been for for several years now but okay. she just does an awesome job and and we're two and a half hours away from her and uh, i don't know if that's far but it seems far to me but you know, whenever we need her, she comes down here and, and does these. And, and the thing that I like about Lindsay is if we got a pretty good shot of one, but she thinks we can get a better one, she'll tell Ethan, which Ethan sticks all these things for on picture day. Mm -hmm. You know, circle that one around and let's see if we can just get her to settle in and get a little bit better shot. And, and these pictures are so valuable with the way we market these cattle now. And I really appreciate the effort and discretion that she uses when trying to get the best picture of each one of these and and then to working with her for so long she's built relationships not just with my dad and i and my wife but with my kids mm -hmm. and um that that's really kind of a special partnership there and we just appreciate her a great deal she does an excellent job and when you watch these videos and, and watch the pictures on the podcast video and in the catalog or, or anywhere else you're looking, you're going to uh, say, Jason, you're you're exactly right with great work that she does. Just appreciate working with good people like her. And so kind of the next one I want to highlight is, is Jeremy Haig, another Indiana Angus guy. <laughs> another uh, guy we grew up with. That's right. I want to call him a kid, but we're not <laughs> kids more, I guess. But um no, we, we started this online sale deal back in 2011 uh, with some friends of our, ours at Dawson Angus. And at that time, Angus Live was not created. And Jeremy came calling on us when he created Angus Live. And I said, well, yeah, I want to do business with, you know, Indiana Angus people and, and people I'm friends with. And, you know, Jeremy makes sure he sees these cattle every year and uh, always tries to help connect us with people that that need cattle that we have available and um, he just cares and again like Lindsay he's got relationships with every member of my family he likes to to work with Ethan Ethan's always trying to sell him one on the side you know he'll grab Jeremy and say <laughs> hey I got your next donor come look at this one mm -hmm. and, and you know he sat there after the preview show on open show day and just spent time with my family and got to trade and swapping stories that probably weren't true with, with my daughter, Emma, who's eight. And he looks at me at one point and says, I don't know that I want my nephew Weston hanging out with her. So <laughs> it, it's just one of those good relationships from, from every angle. And we appreciate Jeremy and the effort that he goes through to help us out every year uh, to put this deal on. Definitely a valued partner. And then, I've got my, my best friend Aaron Orbaugh listed there as kind of the third key partner I wanted to highlight. Aaron's always there. He He's the same age as we are and grew up down the road. We had to kind of revive him a little bit at some point in time. He started off showing shorthorns and breeding right. shorthorns, and we've got him converted over to Angus cattle out in his pasture now. But uh, we became friends when we were 15 years old showing at the Delaware County Fair. And I don't know if he's probably been to the last – 25 angus preview shows helping us out and he's a really good fitter and and good at clipping and you know you don't make a lot of money doing that deal you do it because you care about the cattle and the people you're helping and he always makes himself available to help us tune one in that's really good or if we're just too jammed up and we just need to fill out a fitting crew he he's always there to help us out and you know we started doing that when we were kids and you're still doing that to this day and probably until till our bodies tell us it's time to quit we'll keep doing that together but you know i was able to call him up for picture day this year and said you know i got to roll through these probably faster than what my knees will let me do anymore and he said i have time so he came and helped us get these ready on picture day just just this year and appreciate his friendship and his willingness to always come help us clip one or fit one or you know just be a cheerleader for 
for the crew and you know watch the cattle show and he's kind of our unofficial consultant around here so really right. appreciate him as well right and then another thing that you guys do that you guys work together with is the delaware county beef show they're the the 4-h beef show you guys work together closely on that and always see aaron there and, and always see you there as well getting getting things organized and ran we try to put on a good beef show at, at our county fair and um you know, try to give back a little bit and create a as professional of a show as we can at that level and a, a good time for those kids that participate at the county fair for sure. And he's key in that. So right. So and you guys, you guys do a good job. I uh, appreciate all that you guys do up there. Well, you're always there fitting on <laughs> on your pheasants cattle, right? <laughs> right, right. What's it been? Ten years? I think I've been there. Uh, they said it was her tenth year this year, so I've been there the last ten years. Yes. And, so you've seen you've seen a few changes here and there. Right. And, right. And uh, no, it was good to see her get through. And you got a few more years to keep going there. I think he's got three more to get finished up. <laughs> You're exactly right. We uh, we'll be there a few more years, and and I'm sure you and Aaron will be as well. So. Yep. Jason, you guys have this sale, and, and you guys sell cattle, and you sell cattle around, you sell cattle in Indiana, but then you've still got to take care of the boys, and and Emma coming up as well. How do you guys juggle that? So that's that's a tight wire to walk, I think. And, um, you know, you never sell many cattle to repeat buyers if you show against your clients. Right. And I want to be really clear that we are not here to have our kids show against our clients. So a couple of things we've done to make that possible is, you know, we've never been fall calvers up until a few years ago. But a few years ago, we pulled a handful out and moved them and, and created a little fall fall calving unit said our kids are going to try to show a lot of falls and we're going to sell these springborns mainly january's february's and marches and the other thing that's kind of evolved naturally as the kids have gotten a little deeper into their careers is on paper they own most of the cows right right <laughs> so it's really easy to find bread knowns so so kind of our deal that we kind of put a policy in place is our kids are going to show different ages and bread knowns right if we've got a bread known february and we're at the hoosier beef congress and there's not a bread known division there right we're not going to show her against the february's we sold we're going to run ours crossbred mm -hmm. and, deal. and so we're going to be really deliberate mm -hmm. and really intentional about showing in different classes and different divisions all together than our clients and it's challenging sometimes <laughs> But right. we try to really talk with our kids about the why behind that. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, if they need to make a sacrifice to do the right thing for the client, they understand why we need to do that. So um, that's kind of our, our plan around that and kind of how we tackle that situation. And, and maybe even putting yourself a little bit at a disadvantage to not be against the client and, and go another way. Yeah, but that's that's a short-term disadvantage, but right. the long-term goal is to take care of that client and do the right, right thing, and, you know, our kids are going to have plenty of shots, you know, as time goes on. That's a great thing and, and uh, a thing that, that you wish everybody did, and so uh, commend you guys on, on doing that. The bread known deal, you, you get away from, from everything you sold, so what a great way to do that. Yeah, absolutely. It's you know, challenging from time to time, but it, it just feels like the right thing to do. What do you guys do for these clients that that you sell these cattle to? Because I see you quite often with those, uh, you know, whenever we're at the same show, you're there helping those people as well. And what kind of services and things do you provide for them? That's a great question. Our, our first goal is to sell good cattle and make sure our clients have fun. Right. When we're shows because if the kid's not having fun they're probably not going to be back next year right you know these cattle all come broke to lead I've, i'm seeing a lot of cattle posted on social media right now that say broke to tie mm -hmm. and that's not what we do they are broke to lead they've been rinsed and blown out six plus days a week most of the summer they are ready to throw the show halter on for the first time and go to their first show when they leave our place oh wow and that's what I tell everybody. Just, you know, throw that show halter on at home once or twice and then go ahead and roll on to your first show. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, if you want them clipped for any show, you get them to us. And Ethan and O and I, we're going to get them clipped for you. And that's year-round clipping service. Mm -hmm. Will we be at every single jackpot you get, get them to? <laughs> if you get out to a bunch of them, probably not. Right. You know, the calving season, there's 
you know, right. the season where we're selling bulls private treaty and just sometimes life just has to happen. I've got a day job and dad's got, you know, grain farming to do and, and the boys have to go to school every now and then. But <laughs> right. Right. We will make the effort to get to as many of them as we can and and help get them fit and presented. And then the shows that we're at, you know, mainly here in Indiana, uh, the Hoosier Beef Congress, the Indiana Angus Preview, the State Fair. We invite every client to stall with us. And, you know, if you've got cattle you bought somewhere else, bring them along too. And um, we'll help get them clipped and fit. And uh, when Ethan and I fit and, and Owen, you know, when our family fits on one, you know, you incur no cost for our time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a big enough group, which we often do at some of these deals, where we got to bring in one or two or three outside guys. You got to help pay your share of their costs. But, you know, when you amortize that out over nine or ten head, right. and uh, it doesn't end up being a whole lot compared to some of the expenses that you get into with some of these deals. And we try to really have a good time when we have those those shows where we're all stalled together and my wife gets with all the other moms and says, hey, do you guys want to group up on food? And, you know, kind of puts uh, some sort of shared site out there where they can sign up for bringing food in for a different meal. And we kind of have a, a fellowship there at each meal and and uh, the kids play together. And it's, it's really a good time when we do that stuff. And, you know, it's not just limited to Indiana. We've been going to Louisville at, at North American time for several years so that's Mm -hmm. always an opportunity and you know occasionally we'll hit up atlantic national and junior nationals uh, the last couple years and so any any place we're going if you bought a calf from us and and we're going to be there together then then that opportunity is there as well so right a great way to make new family friends and and get the get the kids out there and um you know yeah be that be that family uh as a as a show crew well, we want the kids to have fun, and I think right. the parents do. I mean, we all want that blue ribbon right. uh, banner, but, you know, that's important. But there's some other things that are more important, and, and we try to, you know, max that out every chance we get for those folks. Exactly. Jason, let's head towards these cattle here that are that are in this sale. And as I look through this, and as I said, we're going to get into these cattle, but as I look through this, this 1606 donor that you guys have she she pops up in some very important places here she sure does and and we ran a little tie on room we we were going to picture her in the catalog and kind of give her credit for what she's done and we kind of had to make some tough choices and cut her picture out but you know she's one that a lot of people are in indiana will know by those four numbers 1606 she's kind of one of those a funny story about her andy um we like those (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> we like funny stories about those have you ever and i i you, this might have happened to you last year have you ever kind of missed that one that maybe is your best one and <sighs> and not realize it at the time uh, <laughs> two years running <laughs> that, that didn't happen to you with a june heifer last year did it? we're we're on our second year of that yes <laughs> yes <clears throat> yeah well the story story on her she was born like the last day or two of April and we had a pretty good March and we had this May heifer that was okay and we this was back when oh my brother was showing I think I was out and um, we said well that last April she'll never be big enough you know it's hard Mm -hmm. to compete with January's and we'll show this March and this May and we had a fair amount of success with both of them and I kept telling my dad I said that April's pretty good pattern though and we never showed her uh-huh. And uh, she was out of a pretty good cow, and and she just kind of kept getting better. And it was probably better for her we didn't show her. You know, she got bred on time, and right out the <laughs> gate, she had a heifer that won a bunch of stuff for us. I, she, you're always down at the Southern Show. She, mm-hmm. Her first daughter won that Southern Show in 09, and mm-hmm. that was before we were doing a lot of flush work and a lot of ET work. And she just kind of kept having our best calf every year. And we flushed her once with a, a partner that I sold half a flush to, and but then didn't really flush her for several years after that. And then she raised a heifer in 2013 that topped our sale that we were having with Dawson's, and the Brown family bought her, and she did some good for them. And then in 14, 
she sold another high seller for us and that heifer won the angus show at the hoosier beef congress and i looked at dad and and the clock family had that one i'm sure you remember that mm -hmm. one sure that absolutely and uh, they're good friends of ours and and we've done a lot of stuff with them but i said we maybe ought to start flushing this old cow and uh, max trying to maximize what we can do with her because she kind of keeps doing it so I told Lindsay, she was there helping take pictures at the Congress. I told her that night, I said, we better get this cow pictured this winter because she's nine years old. Mm -hmm. So that picture that, that you have of her there, Andy, is, is her at nine years old. Oh, wow. Uh, about 30 days before calving that time. And so then we started flushing on her a little more and trying to get multiple daughters born every year. And we flushed her to Luton, and that's kind of where we got our current donor from, who's who's now five years old and is doing us a lot of good. And mm -hmm. and her daughter there, that that Luton made nine one seven. She's uh, the mother of lots three through six. We've got uh, got four of her daughters in here. So the sixteen oh six cow has uh, I think four granddaughters, but she's got eight of them in this sale out of sixteen live lots that trace back to her. So. Oh. Although there's no more direct daughters and no more embryos in the tank, she's still got a, a vast influence on this offering this year. So, Right. Boy, for a nine-year-old cow in that picture, uh, that'll be on the podcast video. So uh, I'm sure it's been up there if you're watching that now. She, that's a heck of a donor. Wish we could keep them all that, looking that way. My biggest regret is that we just didn't start flushing on that one earlier. But, um, you know, we flushed her three or four times there at the end and, and kind of her mm -hmm. her trade and we've got several daughters now and she's got several daughters that are donors for other people too and so we just kind of kind of got a little late on that but it uh, it worked out in the end well those are always fun when you when it's like hey i kind of missed this one but now we're now we're rolling well, Jason, let's get into these cattle a little bit. Again, we got the Angus Equinox sale. Sale closes September 20th. I got my catalog in the mail today. So here on recording day. So I thought that was really great. You had sent me the link and I'd looked at that, but I have one in hand. How can we get one of those in hand if we don't have one yet? So we're on various social media sites. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Ethan just started us up Snapchat. I'm not sure I understand how that works, but I told him he's in charge of that. And yeah. uh, so just message us, and uh, you can get on our website, pipecreekangus.com, and go to our sale page and view it online there. And there's also a contact form there where you can just send us your address and ask us to mail you a physical copy if, if that's the way you'd like to have it. And there's there's still time, so mm -hmm. um, our main open house is September 17th and 18th, and uh, if you want to come eat, my wife is preparing an outstanding chuck roast dinner uh, that we'll start serving on the evening of the 17th at 5 o'clock, and we'll serve it until you want to leave, so there's there's no cutoff. We say our open house ends at dark, but there's lights in the party barn, so we can... Uh, accommodate whatever time frame that you want to stay for on the check roast dinner and then we're also doing something a little different this year the kate's family is having the star search sale uh this saturday of labor day weekend and that's in the morning mm -hmm. and kevin newman's fall classic sale is the evening there on saturday of labor day weekend and we thought we'd try to hold the angus crowd here in east central indiana in between and try to give somebody you know give everybody that wants to see angus cattle only a place to go in between those two so we're putting on a viewing from 11 to 4 this coming saturday the third i believe it is mm -hmm. in right. between those two deals and we're not going to start on top of kate's and we're not going to go past kevin's start time so right. we kind of put a, an 11 to 4 time frame on it and we want to support those two families um but also you know give people a place to go in between those two sales so you know this saturday the third if people want to come see the cattle here in person if that's more convenient then wait until the 17th and 18th we're glad to have you here and you can pick up a catalog in person here if you choose to come on saturday and they can come through the week if if they're listening to this later than than the third on that weekend why they can come through the week before the 17th and 18th is that right Yep, just contact okay, us. Sure. The one rule I've learned about selling cattle is you've got somebody that wants to come look, you never tell them no. So, right. You know, we will we will accommodate you as best we can 
uh, we just ask, you know, if it's not one of our three posted dates that you let us know because, right. um, you know, we've all got day jobs and we want to make sure we're here to show you around. Right. So. right. Well, Jason, let's get into these cattle. And uh, we start off right here with the, with the lot one. We've got a Pendleton daughter and uh, you sent me these videos and, uh, man, she, she's striking. Yeah, and this one can move. I mean, athletic is the word that I would use to describe this one, and, and she's pretty special. I mean, she's not a direct Pendleton daughter. She's out of a Pendleton son that we raised, and uh, the special part of her pedigree is her mother. So she's the first natural calf out of this insight made uh, female that we had win her senior heifer calf division at Louisville two falls ago and um, that was just one of those days that for a little program like ours was pretty magical mm -hmm. you know this heifer kind of was at 12 o'clock that day and rolled in there and I was standing there in the makeup ring watching on the green shavings like you do after you know one of yours goes in and dad looks at me and says well she kind of she's kind of striking a pretty good pose today and I said yeah this is kind of what I thought this one could be at some point in time. I just didn't realize today was the day. And and uh, Jack Ward and Carter Ward were judging that day on the ROV show day. And Jack looked at her and pulled her into the first slot pretty quick. And Dad looks at me and he says, is he placing them top to bottom or bottom to top? <laughs> it's always, isn't that always the thought? It's like, oh my gosh, what, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, and, and I said, I'm pretty sure with him doing it that quick, it's top to bottom. And, you know, then they do the whole recircle deal and mm -hmm. he left her there and, and, uh, and he talked her and we could kind of tell he liked her. And, and then, you know, she not only won that class, but she won that division and, you know, we took her back out there for the grand drive and, and she was out there with all the big boys. You know, there were like seven divisions that day and and all the other divisions were won by national operations that, mm -hmm. you know, win these deals all the time. And then there's us from Gaston, Indiana, <laughs> with one out there. So that was a pretty special day for us and oh, yeah. a really special female. And, and what's cool about this lot one heifer is she's just like her mom in terms of structure and athleticism, but she's better behind her shoulder than mom was, and she's better about uh, her neck and her, her extension, and she just gives a really elegant look from the side, and you can kind of see that in the picture there, and, and we think we think very highly of that one there. and I think she's going to do somebody a lot of good in the ring, but but also then as a brood cow, as, as is evidence with, with what her mom did first time out and and we got lucky that it was a heifer you know i mean it, we didn't have sex semen here this was a bull bred situation and mm -hmm. came out a heifer and so little luck never hurts and those are always fun too when they're out of yours do we want to talk about the lmf profile as if we just go right through the catalog here Yep, so turn the page there, and, and Profile was um, a really good herd bull for us. He's a, a bull that we still have some semen available on through Cattle Visions. Really have sold a fair amount of semen on him, and, and he also won his division at Louisville in 2017 and, and did some other good things as, as a show bull. And we cleaned up with him for four years, and then we had a partner with, with him lately, and um, he's no longer with us, but... Um, He's in here not necessarily to sell uh, semen, but um, just kind of as a reference, the mother of Lot 1 is his maternal sister, so there's a tie in there. Mm -hmm. And then we're also selling the Lot 2 cow, uh, who's another maternal sister of him. So as we roll into the Lot 2 cow, here's a chance to own a maternal sister to LMF profile and, and a maternal sister to that one that we just got done talking about that won her division at Louisville a couple falls ago. And this is a really good cow. She's right in her prime, really deep bodied, just the right size, um, you know, not too big, not too small. Uh, really good and symmetrical when you read this one from her shoulder back to her tail head. And she's been productive. We sold a son of hers last year as a show steer. And we've got a son of hers in the sail bull pen this year that I think he'll probably be the first bull sold out of the sale bull pen. He's just kind of one of those combo deals with good numbers, good looking, and she's only four years old. She's just hitting her prime, mm -hmm. easy keeping, and she's bred to um, Cal Conley's bull, Pinner's Tops, right. and it's sex female semen. So 
pretty good opportunity to get a return on your vet investment pretty quickly with with what should be a heifer calf there as long as the science works for us so start out with that on your on the bred female and and the way they go well and with just being four years old how many more can you get out of it right so right. there's there's a lot of future left in that one i think so right, right. going to do somebody a good job absolutely and, and you know there's times it's like man i i kind of want to buy a bread but i don't know if it's going to be a bull or a heifer and whichever one you may want why this should be pretty good pretty good indication that we're going to have heifer calf well that's why we put it in bold in the sale catalog <laughs> <laughs> let's say it should be a pretty good indication so and then we roll into to some full sibs here and, and a great family that, as we talked, really doing well with that 1606 on the background. We've got these lot three through six, and uh, you've got the three and four cataloged in here together. Right. We just did them in birth order, mm -hmm. not picking any favorites, went youngest to oldest on, on lots three through six here. And so we've got, you know, donor cow on donor cow here. So mm -hmm. we got 1606 on the on the bottom side, and then and now they're direct daughters of our Luton made 917 cow. And um, this cow's really been hitting that out of the park for us. Her her first couple natural daughters we kept, and they were different ages, and the kids showed them, and and both of them were many time champions. And most recently, her fall heifer that was born in 2020 during the open house she decided to come about two hours before we served the dinner there while the donor cow was on display um, so she wanted to show off from the beginning but we've campaigned her for the last 18 months and yeah. just had a heck of a time i mean i was ethan and i were adding it up the other day i think she's won her class 13 times mm -hmm. and those were all state and national shows um you know she's won some shows and I think 12 of those 13 times she was at least reserve division and, and most of the time division champion. And and these four heifers are three-quarter sisters to that good fall that we've been campaigning. They're out of the same cow. And then, you know, the, the fall we've been showing is an insight. And these these heifers are obviously blacklist, which is an insight son. So mm -hmm. you've got two generations of donor cows. You've got a three-quarter sister that has done really well for us and she's only a couple of weeks from calving herself so she may or may not be on display on the 17th and 18th <laughs> hopefully she's on on display to support these heifers with a with a little you know calf at side so we'll we'll see what happens there in between now and then but i'll talk briefly about each one of these the lot three heifer her probably unique thing is she's really good at the ground. She's really set back in that pastern angle, just ideal in her hock angle and her knee angle, and just really, really complete. Probably got a little bit of extra muscle, which I like. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's hopefully something that we're known for. You know, if people follow our cattle, they say, you know, for Angus cattle, they've got a little extra shot of power to them. That's the way we prefer them. And, and I think she exemplifies that, but just really ideal in her angle design and i really really like that one quite a bit right as we roll into the lot four heifer this is the one that's got all the bells and whistles um really hairy <laughs> mm -hmm. i just text uh texted aaron orball yesterday who we talked about earlier after we got done clipping on her yesterday i said it's late august and i just had to peel a half an inch of side hair off of one <laughs> and and that, that was her. That's the lot four heifer. Really hairy, really big boned, an extra shot of extension and performance. And uh, I just, just really has that classic Angus show heifer look with an extra shot of the extras, you know, the, the hair and bone and look. And we think a great deal of that one. Right. I don't know if you've had enough, you know, chances to look at them, Andy, to pick out a favorite of these four, but I I think you're going to be splitting hairs unless I'm missing something. Oh, you're exactly right. Yeah, I've I've been through them as you're talking about them. I've been I've been through the the first four here, the three, four, and five, and I I don't know what I, what I want to do yet. So then you know, turn the page in the book, and then we get into the two Januaries. I think they were born a day apart there. And, mm -hmm. You know, the lot five is just she's a lot like the lot three. Really, really complete, really cali, really practical in her design. Love the center body in this one. Mm -hmm. You're never going to get put down for not having enough cow power there in that one. And then 
lot six is is a little more like lot four you know a little bigger bone kind of deal probably the highest performing heifer of this foursome and um little extra shot of growth and extension and uh kind of the kind of look that people like this one of all of them reminds me the most of her mother and reminds me the most of uh, the one that the clocks won the beef congress with that one's actually a three-quarter sibling to the donor dam of these and uh in terms of design and kind reminds me a lot of her mother and, mm-hmm. and that one that won that congress show in in 14 so good group um I don't think there's there's a wrong answer. I just don't know what the right answer is yet. So <laughs> I don't I don't disagree with you one bit because now I'm on the lot six and I'm like, well, shoot, I thought I had my mind made up. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the short answer is people need to come see them and and just find you know find the right. one that's that's their kind. So right, and I'm like you. I don't I don't think uh, by by looking at videos and pictures and things. I don't think there's anything. I don't think you can go wrong on any of them. And they've, they've kind of got the stamp, but they've kind of got a little bit of difference to them. So what a great set. The lot seven, we roll in and, and we've got the Conley Express. And of course, you know, we don't have to say a whole lot about what Conley Express has done in this deal. And there we've got the 917 cow to back them up again. Yeah, I, I think we've seen a few Express efforts do some winning here the last few years. Mm-hmm. And, and he sure worked for us, as we'll, you'll see as we get deeper into the book here. But um yeah, we got the 917 cow, the donor, the mother of those last four we just talked about on the bottom side here. And then her first calf is the mother of this one. And, and she's pictured there with her daughter. And she did some winning, you know, maybe not as much as this fall did for us. But, you know, she had a couple good days, was third overall to a couple jackpots, you know, won the county fair, uh, reserve division at preview shows. So one that, that played very very well and has been a really excellent cow for us her this is her second calf her first calf um, was the first bull selected out of our sale bull pen he was good enough we got him sold in december so um wow. you know i don't know about you i'm not selling many uh 10 month old bulls in december but no. that's, that's how nice he was that somebody saw it and, and spoke for him there so this heifer here my daughter does not want me to sell mm-hmm she her name is sparkles so she's already got a nickname she comes with the name by the way it's not gonna be able to be changed but uh (laughs) have to put it on the pedigree sign (laughs) yeah yeah absolutely she she's super sweet and in fact i needed to do something with her yesterday and i just walked out in the lot and caught her out there in the lot Mm -hmm. Um, but awesome disposition obviously for a young showman but she's better than just, you know, selling her on her disposition. She's really extended. She's really growthy. She's a March heifer, but she's as big as some of the older heifers. So I think here's one in a little bit different division that um, has a pedigree to back her up and has all kinds of quality and will do somebody a really good job. And then we roll in. We got, uh, as we mentioned earlier, the Rutherfords. They brought some some cattle for you in this one, and uh, they've got a couple of them here, and we gotta we got to follow me to – uh, start their division off here in the lot eight. Yeah, Dave said is going to be really complimentary to ours in terms of quality. They're they're going to match the quality we're bringing here. And um, you know, we had some bred cows and we had some heifer calves, but we didn't have any bred heifers to offer. We ran a a string of having bull calves like we've never had last year, and we sold all our heifers. Mm-hmm. And we normally like to offer a bread heifer or two, but we just didn't have any more. And so this this kind of makes the whole deal work. And this lot eight heifer is good. I've been there and seen these cattle twice. And every time I see them, they keep getting better. And this one, um, I know we're not necessarily as producers when we get them into production here, breeding for hair. But this one is hairy as all get out. If you, you're trying to make show cattle, this one will do it. Really square and symmetrical in her design really even in her underline, got a lot of springer ribs, some extra bone and look. I mean, this one's really, really good. And, um, you know, he's he's retaining uh, a couple flushes on these females. And there's a reason for that is it's because they're donor quality. And, and this one's really nice. So um, I don't think you can go wrong there. So right. she's been AI'd to Synergy and then pasture exposed to their Conley Express son, and I don't know if you've been down there recently or not, Andy, but that Conley Express bull is really good, mm-hmm. um, but we'll have have the due date confirmed by 
by sale time on that, whether it's to the AI date or to the herd bull. Lot nine, I really, really like this one. Um, I know that, that this is Dave's heifer, but we've used tradition of 24 quite a bit. We used him right after he won Denver and were some of the first users of that bull. And th those were good cattle for us. And those cattle made us a lot of money. And and I'm sure this one will do the same for, for her new owner. She's out of a, a dam that comes directly from the Silveris brothers. And uh, I don't know if you remember this one, Andy, but Dave selected her out of the Denim and Diamond sale in Denver, and, and she brought 25000 And so um, this cow is not only a donor for Dave that, that this tradition heifers out of, but she's a donor for, for Silveris as well. And they're going to be selling daughters of her in their show heifer sale this mm -hmm. fall. So royal pedigree, top and bottom. And this one backs it up when you get your eyes on her. She's mm -hmm. very extended. She's very long. She's very good in terms of her muscle shape and her pattern and really, really sound at the ground. This one's, you know, got show heifer written all over. She just happens to be a bred. And in fact, I know Dave would love to see this one hit the show barn yet and, and maybe be shown as a big bred. But uh, obviously, if the buyer doesn't want to do that, you know, that's that's the buyer's option. But right. uh, this one's good enough to run in the show ring. But it's probably going to be, you know, just as good as a cow. And I really like this one a great deal. So. Yeah, a lot of a lot of bells and whistles, and she she just brings it all together. Absolutely, what a really good bread there. The lot ten will round out the Rutherford entries here on these breads. Yeah, what's cool about this one is is Dave has brought some genetic diversity with each one of these, mm -hmm. and um, if you see the bottom cow there in her pedigree, at least as far as we show it in the book, the granddam of this cow is the mother of the famed. 419 cow from four four corners you know and 419 is the mother of 24 carat mm -hmm. so you know we've got the 419 heifer pictured there from when she won denver the grand dam of this this lot 10 heifer is the mother of the 419 there and and, and you see it uh you see the quality when you look at her she's really practical a little more moderate uh, but she's also a little younger there um, just really good in her center rib really cowy but yet nice fronted too and really sound when you see her move around the pen. Uh, this one, again, he had AI to synergy and uh, then pasture exposed to the express sun and uh, really just rounds out a really nice group of bread heifers. As you said, they're they're going to add to to your set. And, and man, isn't it funny how that works out when you need something and uh, you go to those guys and say, hey, it would be nice if we had something. And Dave says, yeah, we got three of them that are really nice. Yeah, I, I would like to say that was a plan that just came together really well, but it's just one of those things that we kind of lucked into, but it's it's going to be very complimentary for sure. You guys are no stranger to the Beef Congress and having success in the steer ring, and here you're going to bring this lot 11 at us, and uh, man, this, this dude's good. <laughs> this guy's cool, and... Um... You know, leave it to guys that, you know, want to win heifer shows, but <laughs> right. put Angus steers out there, you know. So that deal's just kind of happened. You know, you kind of go out there and find one and, you know, you keep finding them and that's that's a good thing and we'll take it. But uh, this guy's kind of Owen's project. He showed um, the steer's mother and um, I don't know if you know Owen as well as you know Ethan because Ethan's more of, of your daughter's age. Right. but. Uh, Owen turns them into pets, uh -huh. and um, he kind of, you know, takes ones that you think, well, maybe this one will have an attitude, and just, you know, you can still go out and rub on them as three or three and four year old cows after he's done with them, and you know, his cow had this this bull calf, and he just kind of started rubbing on him and making him his buddy, and he's he kind of is partial to this one, and this one's really tame because of that stuff that Owen does to him, but. Um, Old Pepper there, he's pretty cool. He's uh, got some shape right behind his shoulder. He's sure got a look from the side. And um, when these pictures were rolling in from, from Lindsay, I shot this one to Ethan. He was in bed and must have still been awake watching TV or something, even though he should have been asleep, <laughs> getting ready for school the next day. And he wrote back one word. He said fancy. And I, I think that's a good way to describe this guy when you see the picture there. And like you said, we've been – fortunate we've had a couple steers there that, that we've sold that won the angus steer show at congress in 16 and 18 and um you know we hope that this guy can 
give him a run at Congress this year if, if he stays in Indiana, but we think this guy is really, really good and will run with some of these ones from the past that we've sold really well, and, and he's starting to hair up too. So um, we encourage people to come take a look at him, not that we're necessarily in the steer business, but when we've got one that we think will work, we, we go ahead and offer him. So Got the show pedigree to go along with it as well, so uh, should be should be really successful with this guy. We move on to lot 12, and uh, we got Hill Valley Reckoning. we got another January female here that's got some purple in her. Yeah, this one keeps coming, and we went out to Maryland this year for the Atlantic National, and we got stalled right beside the family that, that bred that bull mm -hmm. and became friends with them, and he's just good cattle. I mean, he's good-footed and, and good-looking and good-jointed, and, and we used him early, and we got a good group out of him, and I'd say he improved, you know, every cow we bred him to, and um, we've got bushes unbelievable on the bottom side, on the cow side, and um, that cow's been a good cow there. We pictured here we've got her steer calf we sold there a couple of years ago to the Scholl family, and, and that steer did some winning. He won the Northern Angus show and was third overall at that county fair, which is kind of challenging for an Angus steer to get that high up against right. the other breeds but he was just good enough to get that done and i think this heifer here is is a lot like that steer was really good from the side really deep centered really sound and athletic really extended you know mm -hmm. a lot of neck and, mm -hmm. and the right angles throughout this one's going to be really good maybe not the most powerful one when you get behind her right now but she was a twin she has a twin sister that we've retained and i think you know, she just keeps coming every day. And so I think by the time people get out here that they probably won't be too worried about that. And she's done awfully, awfully well for a twin. And we think the future is very bright for this one. So. Very well. Yeah, I'm about to fall out of my chair. She's a twin. Yeah, we, we collected weaning weights last week, actually. And so they were herd tags three and four. And so if I add their weights together, that was uh, nearly 1,400 pounds of heifer that, that mom weaned off there. Oh, so. wow. Well, wow. so productivity right there uh, in that pedigree as well. Yeah, so the lot 13, we got another Hill Valley Reckoning. Yep, so we put those Reckoning heifers together there in the book. Mm -hmm. And um, on the bottom side, we've got a got a Pendleton daughter. And we actually sold um, this one's mother or half of her as lot one in our sale mm -hmm. three years ago. So this one's offered in partnership with the Hughes family. And every now and then... You know, we like to keep half of one we think is really special and then market those progeny with our with our clients. And, and this one's really good. I don't want Hughes to get mad at me, but I think this one's better than, than mom is. And uh, <laughs> Well, I'm sure they're proud of that. Yeah. They, well, they own part of that one too, right? Right, so they went right, away. right. So, um, this one is really good and level out of her shoulder, uh, really attractive and eye-catching. I think this one's get going to get a lot of attention come open house weekend, and, and we're really proud of this one. I think she's got all the good from her mom, but yet some of the extra foot and bone that comes from, from the Reckoning Sire there, and I, I think this one's going to be a lot of fun for, for months to come here for whoever ends up with that one. And if we want to bred female and we want to be pretty sure that we've got a heifer calf coming, we've got that here in the Lot 14. Yeah, so lot 14 is, again, bred to Penner's top, sex female semen. And, and this one I, I put right there in the beginning sentence of the footnote is hard for us to let go. Right. Um, these banjo cows have been really good cows for us for a long time. And um, she'll probably be one of the last few banjo daughters running around, I'd imagine, because, you know, he was old when we, when we made this one. Mm -hmm. um, but she's just been a good cow. I mean, you know, we've got her pictured there with her style daughter that topped her sale last year as a bred female you know you look across the page and she's the mother of the lot 15 heifer this year and we've got another supporting picture there of another daughter that we sold and we've just generated a, a fair amount of dollars with this cow and she's really good looking very complete very stout very deep and she just kind of is one of those ones that you love because she keeps doing it every year and breeds back on time every year and puts good ones out there every year so you know, if people, you know, maybe question me, they just need to come see her. She's she's a nice looking cow. So right, or watch, just look at her video. I mean, that just tells you tells you a whole lot about this female. So man, that'd be hard to let go of that one. Well, you know, she'll probably pay with pay for herself with the 
first calf if, if that sex semen does what it's supposed to do so right absolutely but yeah i feel i feel for you i know what it's i i know how hard it is to let some of those go like that and uh she's really really good yeah why don't you talk about her daughter the lot 15 so this this might be one of the nicest females we've had out of that cow expressed it again for us there on the top side and then we just got done talking about her mother mm -hmm. um really attractive this has been one of dad's favorites from the get-go she just kind of hit the ground and popped up in about 30 seconds and was nursing and and uh we appreciate that and and she's really got a look to her um very level really extended as as all these express daughters have been so far as we've worked through the books and and uh, i think she's going to be uh very valuable at, at this point in the sale uh relative to her peers and and just really nice and attractive and feminine and, and complete i just not really sure what else to say about her she's not one of those ones that is real extreme in one area she's just just extremely complete so mm -hmm. um, but that's a lot 15 heifer there and another real quiet disposition that would be good for a younger showman on that one so and then we we continue on with the Conley express and we've got some extension here in this lot 16. yeah and we really rolled the dice there again um and i talked about that in the footnote so her full sister topped the sale two years ago did a really good job as a show heifer and got the report back that you know she's weaned off her first calf and did her job there really well and and um it's you know, normally, uh, if you got a full sister to a past sale topper, they'd be up at the front of the book. But, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted these express daughters together in the catalog. And there's just a lot to lot to put towards the front of the book this year, in my opinion. But she's certainly not ending the sale because she's the worst one. She's just there because that's the way the book kind of fell together. And she's like a carbon copy of her full sister. Really love the body on this one. Mm -hmm. Really love the hip on this one. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk about a little extra hair this time of year? This one sure has it and uh, moves around the around the pen really good and um, is going to do a nice job for whoever ends up with this one. But we we like this one quite a bit. And you can kind of see in the book her full sister there and and then the one to the right with kind of a three quarter different looking picture there that's that's another sister out of that cow not a full sister but a maternal sister and that brilliance cow just kind of keeps cranking them out for us so certainly quality on the bottom side of her pedigree is as well so what a what a really really nice set you guys have put together for this one uh on on angus live there that's going to end on september 20th and uh we're not done yet because you get to the back the back page and there's some hard to find stuff back there that you guys are going to offer. So we, we've started doing that here the last few years. And I get to be a little bit of a, you know, collector on this stuff. And my wife calls it wasting money. And so, <laughs> you know, we, we'll have different viewpoints on that. And, you know, I, I got to listen to her every now and then because she does all the design work and she builds the website and designs this catalog and, does all this technical stuff that I don't know how to do. So every now and then when she gets after me for wasting money on these frozen genetics, I got to turn some of it back into cash just so she'll design our next ad or next <laughs> sale. So, right. Uh, but no, when, when it came out that style was no longer with us, you know, I'm a banker by, by day. And mm -hmm. so the kids had money in, in savings accounts that wasn't earning them anything. And, so I called Lance over there at Cattle Visions and I just said, send us 20 units. I'm going to buy 10 for Adam and 10 for Ethan. And and uh, that turned into a pretty good investment. I think we, we moved half of that last year and almost made all the boys' money back. And so Adam's getting older. He'll be 20 here on the second day of our main open house and better probably turn his frozen investment back into cash for him. He's getting the age he might need it for, for something here or there. And so... Right. We're going to offer three more of his units of style there, and he sure done us a good job. And and uh, Ethan thinks he wants to keep a hold of it. He thinks we need to flush everything to style. So him and my dad debate on that quite a bit, and I think I'm somewhere in between, but he sure done a good job for us. And so we'll have three units of style there. Is lot 17, and we talked about profile earlier. He's no longer with us, and we don't have a huge bank on him we have a little bit of a bank and you know we're we're offering uh, a lot a group of 10 as lot 18 and 
another group of five is lot 19. And then we have our LMF Vision Bull, which he's an unbelievable son. And uh, he's also carried through Cattle Visions. And, and we're going to offer another group of 10 units on him and another group of five on him. And, and he's, he's still with us. And he, he's sure done a good job for us. He's actually the sire of, of the uh, cow that the lot seven females out of and then blue chip and bismarck they're getting harder to find and we have a little bit of that around so we've got a unit of each of them there to round out the sale but um you know that stuff will sell for whatever it's worth that night and hopefully that'll help some breeders out with with some stuff that they're having trouble finding there to to round out the sale but um that's kind of how we'll round out the the deal there with some semen lots andy that sounds great again uh look for it on angus live for it closes the the 20th uh, they got the open houses again uh saturday september 3rd if you're listening to this before that and then again open houses on the 17th and 18th of september 9 a.m you can start showing up there make sure you get that chuck roast dinner on september the 17th to be there and look at cattle and uh, i'm sure you can help them bid if if they're as technologically challenged as you are you can you can have kelly fill them in right <laughs> we we won't miss a bid for technology reason you know jeremy had the site rebuilt um uh -huh. before last year's sale and it's very user friendly the the old one was as well but um you know between jeremy and his wife jenny and and kelly and i uh, just call us and we'll get your bid taken and and we'll make sure you know where you're at throughout the night and um you know just want to treat everybody fairly and, and get the cattle where they need to go and, and into, you know, our clients' hands and hopefully into the show ring and, and beyond. So, Jason, anything else we need to know about this sale or about these cattle? No, I think, I think you've made me talk enough here and uh, <laughs> I'm glad to, maybe I talked a little too much, but glad to chat with anybody as much or as little as they'd like to about the cattle. You know, if you don't want to talk to me, you can talk to dad, you can talk to Ethan. <laughs> um and they'll tell you what no, they think so. if if you want the short version maybe <laughs> ethan if you want the a little extended version maybe jason and if you want the real extended version <laughs> call lee right well i didn't say that <laughs> <laughs> i'll go out on it i'll take the heat for that one <laughs> well but you know i i couldn't be prouder to to help my dad market you know right. his life's work here and and he bred these things up you know right. i mean a lot of these cattle represented are nine or ten or more uh, generations of you know him ai and these things you know one generation after the next and um you know if you want to know about all the genetics and the background there he he'd sure be glad to spend time talking with you about that so absolutely jason again they got the angus equinox sale hosted by pipe creek angus uh september 17th 18th open houses sale closes on the 20th gaston indiana again if you're around there on the weekend of labor day you've got the star search sale there at cates's you've got the indian fall classic sale there uh even uh newcomb has a sale there in winchester so all kinds of things going on right there in that part of indiana that uh no no reason to not stop in and see jason and those guys jason appreciate it very much and uh good luck with the sale and uh, good luck with everything and we will be watching that and paying attention well thanks andy we appreciate you doing this and uh forward to all the sales this fall and visiting with everybody right well appreciate it very much and we appreciate you listening to another edition of before the Bid podcast